A love story, ladies and gentlemen. A love story <laughs> is what procreates the human race. It's what keeps us all going. It's what the humans are all about, is a love story. And this couple has a very, very special love story here tonight. And you're going to hear it for the first time. Emily and Timothy are hearing it for the first time, too. They do not know what to expect. <laughs> Bird, tree, you. You may have noticed those words on tonight's guest book over there in the corner. But you know how those words found their way into tonight's event? Listen carefully to the love story of Emily and Timothy and you will find out. <laughs> Timothy James Cornett picked up his cell phone. A cell phone which for some reason suddenly felt like it weighed exactly one million pounds. <laughs> he began dialing a number and stopped himself halfway through dialing. That's true. I'm not pumped up enough, he thought to himself. <laughs> I need to listen to some pump you up kind of music. <laughs> About roughly 10 minutes or so of the most intense workout music he could think of, <laughs> he picked up his heavy cell phone again, and this time he dialed the entire number. The man on the other end of the call answered, and after a short conversation, Timothy, otherwise known as TJ or Timmy, hung up the phone, did a couple of celebratory fist pumps, and put down the same phone which now magically felt light as a feather. <laughs> Timothy knew he had to get this, get this one just right. He had just arranged a meeting with Don Reinhardt, a man who at this time could seal Timothy's future. <laughs> I have a few days to prepare, he thought to himself. And I'm going to nail this. And in the days prior to this all-important meeting, he began to reflect on the series of events which led him to this amazing point in his life. You see, it all began with Timothy's childhood friend, Leslie, who moved away from Timothy's hometown of Ithaca, Wisconsin, just before middle school. Leslie landed here in the Quad Cities and subsequently became friends in 2013 with a young woman named Emily Page Reinhardt. Timothy also ended up in the beautiful Quad Cities sometime in 2015 and reconnected with Leslie. And a few short months later, Leslie, in a stroke of pure genius, invited Timothy and his brother Josh to join her and Emily at the Great River Brewery. This is the point in our story where the fireworks begin. That night, Timothy was immediately struck by Emily's beauty. Her sparkling personality, her eyes, and how easy it was to talk with her. How in the world is it even remotely possible that she is single, he thought to himself. <laughs> the very next day, Timothy sent a Facebook message to Emily. Now, we don't know what that message was, but we do know that it was good enough to keep Emily interested. Emily, after all, was already imp impressed by the previous evening's firm and sincere handshake from Timmy. His confidence and kindness, his cute smile, and most importantly, his shoes. <laughs> it was definitely game on. Page two. After exactly two months and 13 days, but who's counting, of the obligatory and essential online flirting and joke exchanging, this couple could wait no longer, and a first date was arranged. And now for that all important first date, Timothy suggested they go out to dinner. So perhaps as a test, Emily offered up two suggestions for dinner locations, one of which was Johnny's Steakhouse, I don't know what the other one was, but it was clearly not as desirable as Johnny's for a first date. And so Tim chose the latter, oblivious to the fact that Johnny's is the prime location to choose when you want to make an impression, when you want to score points with a woman, or when you want to set yourself apart. So having failed that test, Emily offered up a second chance. And this time Tim wisely rethought and took Emily to Johnny's. Now in preparation for his big date, Tim donned some khaki pants, a blue button-down shirt, a black jacket, and his glasses. <laughs> and off to Johnny's, the couple went. Now the menu at Johnny's could be a little intimidating for a first-timer, as Tim soon discovered. But besides the food, the prices, the ambiance, being with Emily, Tim found himself totally preoccupied with one pervasive thought. How does my butt look in these pants? <laughs> His posterior must have been sufficiently acceptable as Emily found herself totally smitten by Tim. And of course, Tim knew this instinctively. It was the night before Emily began nursing school. 
Timothy became Emily's biggest cheerleader and support through the entire education process. A process which, by the way, came to its fruition with her graduation one week ago. Now that first date at Johnny's led to another date, and then another. Tim knew that there was no one else in the world he would rather be with. Over time, he became enchanted with the glow of her face and how she lived life to the fullest. Her happiness and positivity, positivity rocked Tim's world. He knew that no one else could keep him on his toes like Emily. No one else would challenge him as much as she did. And most importantly, Emily was one who loved the Lord as much as he did. It would only be a matter of time when one of them would utter the all-important three-word sentence of I love you. So one lazy summer afternoon, as they were enjoying the sunshine on a hammock, during a lull in their conversation, Emily invited Timothy to pick three words. <laughs> as soon as Emily finished speaking, she realized she had unintentionally invited Tim to utter a magic sentence. <laughs> Timothy responded with, bird, tree, you. a few months, it was time for the pre-arranged meeting with the all-important Don Reinhardt. Tim strolled nervously into Dunn Brothers Coffee, his heart beating out of his chest. Don was waiting at a table for him. Tim sat down, got his nerves under control, and began engaging Mr. Reinhardt in conversation. After about an hour or so, Don finally asked him, what are we really here to talk about? Tim explained, I'd like to talk about your daughter. I'd like to marry her, and I would like to ask for your blessing. After what seemed like an eternity of silence, Don smiled and responded, I know you love her, Tim, but do you like her? In other words, if Emily asks for a glass of water in the middle of the night, and you're in bed, and the floor is freezing cold, will you get it for her? Yes, Tim said. Yes, I like her. <laughs> and soon thereafter, one cold December night before Christmas, Timothy set up a small scavenger hunt for Emily to find the engagement ring that he had picked out. And he asked Emily to spend the rest of her life with him. Emily looked at this genuine man in front of her, a man who was witty and patient, a man who promised to show her that he loved her every single day a man who loves Jesus, his family, and lives his life with integrity. And she said yes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you have heard the first few chapters in the love story of Emily and Timothy. And now you're going to witness the next chapter being written right in front of all of you, beginning with their first dance as husband and wife. Please welcome to the dance floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. and Mrs. Timothy yeah. and Emily Cornett. <laughs> so good to go. <laughs>